Let us pray. Our great God in heaven, we thank you tonight. We do bless your name because of the privilege you give us to study your word together as leaders and workers in the church. We pray that you strengthen us spiritually so that all that we need to do, the enablement to do it, the anointing to do it, the power to do it, the courage to do it, you grant to every one of us in Jesus' name. And we pray that every one of us will succeed in the ministry you have given us in Jesus' name. Help us day by day to follow you and to do exactly what you expect us to do so that your blessing and reward will be upon the work that we are doing for you. In Jesus' name we pray. We started the study of the book of Joshua last uh, two weeks. And today we're looking at chapter 1, verses 6 through to 9. And it's uh, titled, Divine Imperatives for Success. In Joshua chapter 1, verse 6. Be strong and of a good courage. For unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land, which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law, which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. We are looking at the encouragement that God himself gave unto Joshua. And you will see that uh, the Lord himself mentioned he wanted him to be prosperous in the work he had given him to do. At the end of verse 7, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. And at the end of verse 8, for them, thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. God delights in our success in all the things he has appointed for us to do in life. Please notice all the things he has appointed for us to do in life. I don't think you will expect that God will give us success or prosperity in the things he has not appointed for us to do. If we are busy on other things, on side issues, you do not expect that the Lord will give us success. But when you stay in the very center of the will of God, the appointment of God, what he has assigned for you to do, he expects us and he will even aid us and help and support us to be successful. And he has shown us how to succeed in the ministry. It shows, it shows us that in the world. And if we follow his revealed plan, our lives will be fruitful and fulfilled. Our lives and ministries will be meaningful and successful. As soon as he called and commissioned Joshua, he also gave him the divine blueprint. That is, he gave him what he will do to make him successful in that divinely appointed task. First, God gave Joshua a promise. And then he gave him a precept. And then again, a concluding promise. If you notice uh, the whole chapter from the beginning, you will notice a threefold promise. The promise, it says, number one, every place the soul of your foot shall tread upon that have I given unto you. And then it says, there shall not any man be able to stand before you. And then it says, I will be with you, I will not fail you, I will not forsake you. He gave him that threefold uh, promise, even before giving him the challenge to move on into the land. But then, the promise will not stand in isolation, will not stand alone. He now gave him a threefold precept. Be strong and of a good courage. Observe to do 
all that all according to the law this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth what is it to do meditate therein day and night and then after giving the commandment the precept he concluded with a promise again verses 7 to 9 that that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest and then he also says that thou shalt have good success and then he says is the lord thy god and it will be with thee whithersoever thou goest that's always the way that god deals with his own children first the promise but the promises are not meant to set aside the precepts rather they are given to encourage us to do the will of god to strengthen our heart and to give us the might so that we'll be able to do what he has commanded us to do divine assurance then is an incentive it's an encouragement to the performance of duty remember that promise leads to precept and precept still attracts a concluding promise we're looking at three points in our study tonight number one spiritual strength and courage indispensable if we're going to carry on carry out fulfill everything he has called us to fulfill we must have the very commandments of god and we must have spiritual strength and courage number two success and conquest through implicit obedience number three steadfast soldiers of christ invincible unconquerable number one spiritual strength and courage indispensable i want you to notice in the passage you read already how god repeated three times over when he said be strong and of a good courage look at verse six be strong and of a good courage that's an imperative that's a commandment that's an injunction he told him you need this joshua and he's telling us you need this christian worker be strong and of a good courage look at verse seven it bears repetition only be thou strong and very courageous you will see it as the lord emphasized it the second time joshua a lot is lying ahead of you and if you're going to get the work done only be strong and very courageous verse 9 the third time now have not i commanded thee be strong and of a good courage we learn then that if we're going to do the work of god successfully courage is indispensable being strong spiritually is the indispensable the ministry is not meant for people that are cowardly the people that do not have conviction the people that cannot face the enemy boldly but then we must have the courage and we must have the strength spiritual strength to follow god and to do not just part of his will to do all his will joshua's task entailed included facing problems and dangers such as will make ordinary men tremble and retreat and uh, the same thing with us today our task our assignment will sometimes attract problems and dangers that's why the lord is telling us three times all over be strong and of a good courage not only that he was to move without hesitation jericho walls will be very high will be very thick will be very deep the enemies within jericho walls will be very strong and very much prepared and there'll be a conspiracy of kings against him and yet he must move on without hesitation upon entering canaan powerful enemies will be faced the land were inhabited uh, was inhabited rather by races of giants and formidable obstacles had to be overcome because of that god said be strong and very courageous and we were living in these last days isn't that the same thing that we face there are dangers everywhere the challenges of the ministry and if we're going to carry the ministry to the very end and fulfill the will of the lord in the ministry we we'll need to be strong and very courageous to obey god and to regulate our character and conduct by the divine standard will require resoluteness will require fortitude will require daring perseverance to do the work of god in his appointed way when the flesh and the world will be suggesting an easier way 
but you want to stick to the way of God. That will require strength. That will require courage. It will require resolution and courage to swim against the tide of popular opinion. And, uh, but we have the promise of divine presence. The promise of divine protection. That he will be with us while we are walking in the path of duty. And if God be for you, who can be against you? Look unto God. He says, I will not fail you. I will not forsake you. Count upon the Lord. Lean upon the Lord. Look unto him at all times. And it will strengthen you and strength will replace weakness and courage will replace fear. In other parts of the word of God, we're told the same thing. That we are to be very courageous. We are to be bold in the work of the Lord. In 2 Chronicles chapter 15. 2 Chronicles chapter 15 verse 7. Before I read verse 7, I want you to understand the situation at that time. Look at verse 3. Now for a long season, Israel had been without, a tr without the true king, without the true God, and without a teaching priest, and without the law. They had been lawless. They had been people that didn't have the teaching of the word of God, and it was like they didn't have the presence and the power of the true God in their midst. And then this man, Esa, he rose up. He took up the challenge. He was going to do the work of God. He was going to bring revival into the nation. In verse 2, the middle part, the Lord is with you. While ye be with him, if ye seek him, he will be found of you. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. And then we're given the background that they had been without teacher. They had been without the truth. They had been without the law. And this man that rose up to do something like this, bring revival into the nation, it will demand courage. It will demand spiritual strength. That's why the prophet told him in verse 7, Be ye strong, therefore, and let not your heart be weak, for, for your work shall be rewarded. The Lord is telling you the same thing. The, your work will be rewarded in Jesus' name. And since your work is going to be rewarded, even though the difficulties are there, even though the problems are there, you know what the devil wants to do? He wants to cut the blessings away from you. The reward away from you. That's why I will bring discouragement. That's why he will try to do something so that you will not manifest conviction and courage and constancy and commitment in the work of the Lord. But since you know that the reward will come, give yourself to it. And give it all the sacrifice that it will demand. Because the reward eventually will come. In 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 13. Watch you stand fast in the faith quit you like men be strong it says behave not like a sissy and effeminate fellow not like an amphibian not like somebody like a jellyfish not somebody that doesn't have backbone not somebody that is you know here and there and cannot take his stand he says the work demands the people that are strong in the lord and strong in the faith watch ye therefore and then it says stand fast in the faith Quit you like men, behave like men, stand like men, and do the work like men. And then it says, be strong. How are you going to be strong? Not in ourselves, not in our own strength, not in our own natural ability. We are to be strong in the grace of the Lord. In uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Reading from verse 1. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus bury yourself in christ look up to christ lean upon christ receive the grace from the lord and be saturated with the strength and the grace of christ and be strong in the grace that is in christ jesus and then he tells us the way you ought to be strong look at verse 3 now therefore endure hardness hardship as a good soldier of jesus christ you know there are many workers and leaders they do not know that uh, you know there will be difficulties in the way they do not know that we are called to be soldiers in the army. We want to live like, you know, an easy life, a convenient life. And anytime there's a little challenge, a little problem, a little difficulty, a little opposition, a little criticism, a little conflict in the work, in the district, or in the church at large, then we back out. Then we say, I didn't know the fire will be as hot as that. But even the people of the world, they tell us, if you cannot face the music, you cannot lead the orchestra. 
if you are going to lead any group of people you must know that leadership will come with some heat will come with some pressure and some difficulties and therefore you will stand like a soldier it says therefore endure hardness there is a cross to bear there is a burden to carry there is a difficulty you are going to wait through there is a mountain you may have to climb and there are challenges that you are going to face make up your mind if you are going to be a leader you are going to have spiritual strength and courage before you can have the success therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of jesus christ therefore you will not live uh, you know an indolent idle easy life you will know that leadership demands challenge and a challenge you are going to face in deuteronomy chapter 31 deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 6 and verse 10 deuteronomy 31 verse 6 be strong and of a good courage hey, don't you see how many times the word of god is repeating and telling us be strong and be of a good courage fear not and for not be afraid of them you know in leadership fear paralyzes action in fact fear will make you to uh, get to such a state you'll not know even how to think you'll not be able to use your senses you'll not be able to plan you'll not be able to uh, do things that they ought to be done because once you become afraid and you are under the spell of fear it's like common sense is gone sanctified sense is gone vision is gone all that god wants to accomplish everything is gone and then you are just there you may still be the leader there or the coordinator there you'll be a figurehead because once fear paralyzes you it blindfolds you it deafens you you cannot even see ahead the way you ought to see that's why it says be strong be of a good courage fear not and be not afraid of them for the lord thy god he it is that does go with thee he will not fail you he will not fail you in jesus name nor forsake you since we know that he always will be with us why are we afraid there is nothing to be afraid of a writer put it this way he said there is only one thing on earth to be afraid of and that is fear itself and anytime you see that thing coming you know that it's going to paralyze you it's going to immobilize you and it's going to make you useless and you will not be able to do the thing the lord has called you to do look at verse 10 it says moses commanded them saying at the end of every seven years in the solemn uh, in the solemnity of the year of release of the tabernacle and then he goes on they will read the word of god and when they read the word of god they read it to everyone and they will be obedient unto that word and when they read that word that will give them the courage they ought to have joshua's new assignment new duty and ministry will make many enemies for him you know joshua was just about to get to the land of canaan he was now at the border many people that did not know him before they'll begin to hear about his name and when they hear about his name they will know something about him he has come to capture the land he has come to take the land even the people that did not know him they will become his enemies that's leadership you make enemies for yourself when you become a leader and if you cannot face that then you shouldn't be a leader when it became known that jericho was captured and air was uh, vanquished you know what they did the kings that never bothered about him before they conspired together to destroy him and such will be the experience of uh, an obedient christian if we are faithful and obedient to christ many of our old friends will even turn against us and they'll become enemies the faithful the loyal worker the minister cannot make all people to turn and to be friendly with him by his very faithfulness in the ministry he will make many enemies for himself that's why the lord was telling joshua don't turn to the right don't turn to the left believe the word of god move on and march on carry on all these people because you are going to divide the land unto them a great work lay ahead of joshua to be accomplished his obedience required strength and courage because it involved years of persevering effort and so it is with each of us the protected warfare of the christian life and the ministry demands that we be strong in the grace of the lord but we only have to live a day at a time it's not difficult all the lord is asking for is be bold today when tomorrow comes 
Tomorrow will take care of itself. Overcome the temptation of the moment. When another temptation comes, that will take care of itself. Face one enemy at a time. And you'll find the grace of God will be sufficient for every one of us in Jesus' name. We go to point number two. Success and conquest through implicit obedience. Here now God was telling Joshua the secret of success. How was he going to be successful? Look at it from verse, the latter part of verse 7. In the latter part of verse 7, it says, That thou mayest observe to do according to all the law, which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Now, something is uh, very important here. Moses is dead already. And yet, do you know how many times in this single chapter, God referring to Moses right from uh, uh, verses 1 and 2, Moses, my servant. He repeated it over and over and over. What a wonderful thing that uh, even after we are dead and gone, our ministry and the influence of our ministry still continues. A preacher was uh, preaching when he read the, the word of God and he said, uh, many people are asking the question, when the children of God die, when ministers of the gospel die, why is it that they don't get their reward immediately? Why is it at a later time, on the last day, then all the ministers will still come and then get their reward? And then, uh, knowing that some of these ministers have died hundreds of years ago, why is it they were not rewarded immediately? And the minister replied, he said, because after they have died, they have not finished their work yet. And then he explained, he said he visited institution of D.L. Moody. And D.L. Moody had died a decades ago, many, many years ago. And then when he got into that institution, he saw all the books, he saw all the videos, he saw all the scientific things they were doing, he saw the commentaries they were putting together, and he saw that the ministry of D.L. Moody was still continuing. And then he said, because he has not finished his work, he cannot get the reward yet. It is when the rapture takes place. When all the influences of his good ministry that had continued until that time of the rapture, when everything is finalized, then he'll be wonderfully rewarded. And we can say the same thing about people like Spurgeon, about people like Finney, about people like John Wesley. Although they have died many, many years ago, the, their influence is still here. Their books are still here. And because we're still reading their books, and we're still benefiting from what they have done, their reward is still to be given unto them. In fact, do you understand that if they worked only for 30 years, and now for another 200 years or 300 years, they are accumulating reward for themselves. What they are going to get as a result of what they have done, even after their death, might even be more than what they did in their lifetime. You think about a person like Matthew Henry that put all that commentary together. And every time you read that, every time it challenges you and it makes you to, to, to go to forward in the way of the Lord, that man, although he is now of the Lord, much, much reward is still waiting for him. That's a challenge to you and to me as well. Whatever we are doing now, do it with all your strength. Do it with all your mind. And what you are doing now doesn't terminate here. Even after you have died, you will still see that the Lord is still saying, Moses, my servant. Moses, my servant. Moses, my servant. In verse 7 again, it says that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law, which Moses, my servant, commanded thee, turn not from it in the right uh, hand, to the right hand, or to the left, that thou mayest uh, prosper whithersoever thou goest in verse 8, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth that but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein for then only then when you're obedient to the word when you keep to the word only then will you make your way prosperous then shall thou have good success and that we find in many passages of scripture that if we're going to receive blessing if our ministry is going to become successful, we need to be obedient to the watch of God. In Deuteronomy chapter 5. Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 32 and verse 33. Chapter 5, verse 32. Ye shall observe to do therefore as the Lord your God has commanded you. Ye shall not turn aside to the right hand or to the left. Ye shall walk in all the ways which the Lord your God has commanded you and ye shall that ye may live and that it may be well with you and that ye may prolong your days in the land which ye shall 
possess. He tells us that if you want to have long life, if you want to have success in ministry, if you want to be have the praise of the Lord, the commendation of the Lord, then you will make sure that you do everything that you read in the Word of God. You don't turn to the left, you don't turn to the right, but you're obedient in everything. In Deuteronomy chapter 31, Deuteronomy chapter 31, from verse 10 through to verse 13. Here it says, Moses commanded them, saying, Oh, we read that before. Let me uh, move on now to verse, uh, to verse 12. Uh, gather the people together, men, women, and children, and a stranger that is within thy gates, that they may hear, and that they may learn, and fear the Lord your God, and observe to do all the words of this law. And it is when we do that, that their children, which have not known uh, the anything, may hear and learn to fear the Lord your God, as long as ye live in the land, whither ye go over Jordan to possess it. They will possess the land if they were obedient to the word of the Lord. Obedience then is commanded. And it is not just partial obedience. It is not a, a, a kind of intermittent obedience. It is obedience that is there all the time. Obedience that is complete. Obedience that is thorough. Obedience that is full and perfect in the sight of the Lord. You see the way the Lord has commanded Joshua. Joshua was not uh, allowed to turn to the right or to turn to the left. He was not to lean on his own understanding and modify the word of God and change the word of God. No, he was not even to be inclined to the opinions of other people. He was to be governed, he was to be controlled by the written word of God, the commandment of the Lord. The Christian is not to pick and choose which commandment he will obey and which one he will not obey our obedience if it's going to be acceptable to the lord must have respect to all the commandments of the lord we must not be partial or discriminating in our obedience to the word of god uh, look at the indictment that god gave uh, some people in the days of old in malachi chapter 2 malachi chapter 2 verse 8 and verse 9 but ye are departed out of the way ye have caused many to stumble at the law ye have corrupted the covenant of levi says the lord of hosts therefore have i also made you contemptible and base before all the people according as ye have not kept my ways listen to this now but have been partial in the law they were partial they will pick and choose they will obey the ones that suited their fancy and they will reject the one that contradicted the ways of the flesh they will reject the ones that didn't suit them but god was telling joshua joshua you will not do like that your obedience will be full your obedience will be complete your obedience will be perfect joshua was not permitted to overlook or to be little or to set aside any of the commandments of the lord he was to adhere rigidly and constantly to the word set before him no matter how contrary to natural wisdom no matter how unpopular the precept or the commandment of the lord might be to other people god requires full continuous obedience from joshua and it's the same thing god is demanding from you and from me today obedience total obedience implicit obedience is a path of prosperity and success in the work of the lord the path of obedience is a path of blessing and it's only when you tread uh, in that way even though you may incur the frowns of men but what does that matter if you have the smile of god the approval of god the reward of the master it's only when you go that way and you're fully obedient to the lord in everything in every way you have the blessing of the lord in psalm 1 psalm 1 reading from verse 1 blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly nor standeth in the way in the in the way of sinners nor standeth in the seat of the scornful i went this man is blessed what's his attitude 
What's his characteristic? What are the good attributes we find in his life? In verse 2, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law does he meditate day and night. What is the result of that? The consequence of that kind of meditation and obedience to the word of God. It shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. That bringeth forth his fruit. In his season, his leaf also shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall do what? shall prosper i pray that will be your lord in jesus name in first timothy chapter 4 paul the apostle talking to timothy and talking to every one of us who are ministering you're a minister of the gospel you're doing the work of the lord here is what is required from every one of us in first timothy chapter 4 verse 15 verse 16 meditate upon these things which things the word of god the doctrines of the bible the duty and the assignment God has given us and the challenge he's given us from his word. Meditate upon all these things. Give thyself. What's the next word? What's the next word? Holy. Completely. Not partially. You know, when you are partial in your commitment, partial in your consecration, partial in your earnestness, partial in your fervency, partial in your sacrifice, partial in what you are doing, you are not able really to please the Lord. It will be like the person that the Lord said, although he did the work of God, and although he appeared to do the will of God, put your finger in, um, in uh, that uh, first, uh, first Timothy, and come to the Old Testament, I'll come back to Timothy, uh, look at um, in Chronicles, in Second Chronicles chapter 25, Second Chronicles chapter 25, verse 2. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. What was the next part of that sentence? But not with a perfect heart. It's not just to do what is right. It's not just to preach. It's not just to lead us fellowship. It's not just to sing in the choir. It's not just to do the work of the Lord. You, you see the man there. He did that which was right. Outwardly it was right. Looking at it with the standard of money, it was right. But not with a perfect heart. That's why in First Timothy, come back now. In First Timothy chapter 4 verse 15, meditate upon this. Is, Give thyself wholly, completely, perfectly, without any reservation unto them. That thy profiting may appear to all. Take it unto thyself and to all the doctrine. Unto the doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. That's the challenge we have in the watch of the Lord. And those are the people that will be rewarded on the final day. Revelation chapter 22. Revelation chapter 22 verse 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments that they may have right to the tree of life that they may enter in through into the into the city through the gates into the city therefore then the lord was challenging joshua and he was telling him if you are going to be successful in this new assignment in this great ministry that i've committed into your hand you will need to obey the word and then he told him the book shall not depart out of thy mouth but you will meditate day and in day and night to observe to do according to all not some not many according to all that is written therein joshua was to meditate on the word in the book not only to preach it to others that's our responsibilities we are not only to preach we are to carry out the word we are to be obedient to the word we are to stand for the word and stand by the word. Regulate your life and regulate your, you know, your family, everything about you by the word of the Lord. That you also, like Joshua, may do according to all that is written therein. He was not only to preach, he was to observe. He was to obey. Our lives and all our actions in the ministry must be governed, must be regulated by the book of God. No man, however exalted. No man, however dignified his position may be in the church, is above the law of God. Even in the world, they tell us that nobody is above the law. And if you have been reading the papers, you will see how the, the speaker of the house had to be told to step down just because of that kind of deception and lie. And he lost is the fourth person in the whole in the whole nation in the present regime, in a present political arrangement. And yet, because of that thing, that even some Christians will say, What did I do after all? All that happened is that uh, they said that I falsified this, I falsified that. If they will take it to that standard in the world and they will tell us that nobody is above the law, Joshua then could not be above the law. 
A pastor then could not be above the law of God. And a coordinator then could not be above the law of God. It means then that we must order all our steps by the reaching word of God. If Joshua was to succeed and complete the work which Moses started, which he began, he must obey, he must teach, he must maintain the law of God and that Moses had, and that God had given through Moses. We cannot expect the God of truth to be with us if we neglect the truth of God. What are you to do then? Read it. Meditate on it. Believe it. Obey it. Defend it. Preach it. Leave it out. We come to point number three. Steadfast soldiers of Christ, invincible. Steadfast soldiers of Christ, invincible. That means unconquerable. If we will stand by the word of God, then no force will be able to defeat us. And like the Lord gave us the promise last week, there shall no man be able to stand before you. He will give you a kind of power, a kind of authority, that no witch or wizard will be able to withstand you in Jesus' name. How are we to be steadfast? How are we to react? How are we to live our lives? How are we to operate in the ministry? Look at verse 9. Have not I commanded thee? Joshua, do you know he has commanded you? The one that is greater than angels. And the one that has the control of heaven and earth. And the one that can take the breath away from Pharaoh or Herod or the magicians of Egypt or the sorcerers or, or the Chaldeans in Babylon. And the one that has control over the elements of the air, over everything. Do you know he's behind you? And do you know he's within you? Do you know he's going before you? Do you know who has commanded you? Have not I the Almighty? Have not I the Holy One of Israel? Have not I the one that uh, the one that supported Moses? Have not I the one that sunk and drowned the, the Egyptian chariots in the Red Sea? Have not I the one that is able to sustain you and even give you the strength of an angel and the protection uh, greater than that of an angel? Have not I commanded you? If you know who is standing by you, if you know who is behind you, if you know who is going before you, then you will not be afraid. Be strong and of a good courage. That's what the Lord is telling us. He says the one that is with you is greater than all those in the world and they will not be able to do anything against you in Jesus name. What if I obey the Lord? What if I carry out the ministry? What if I do the things he wants me to do? And those Canaanites and those uh, people in Jericho, they fight against me. But one with God is in the watch. is in the majority and the one that uh, is with you, no power can ever conquer him. I said no power can ever conquer him. And because no power can conquer him, no power can conquer you in Jesus' name. We tremble and we shake, we're afraid and uh, we're cowardly because we do not remember the word that the everlasting arms are underneath you. We do not remember that the umbrella of the Almighty God is above you. And there is no one, there is nobody on earth in the sea anywhere that can touch your life. In Second Chronicles chapter 20. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 6, and said, O Lord God of our fathers, art thou not God in heaven? That's the Lord that commanded Joshua. And rulest thou, uh, and rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the heathen? That's the Lord that commanded Joshua. And in thine hand is there not power and might, so that none is able to withstand thee. That's the Lord that commanded Joshua. That's why I said, Joshua, do you know your God? Do you know his ability? Do you know his strength? Do you know his power? I'm, I'm not the one that commanded you. I'm not I commanded you. Be strong and of a good courage. It says, be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. Be not afraid. The Lord is with you. In the day, in the night, he will be with you. On the sea, he will be with you. When you are passing through the fire, he will be with you. When the enemies gang up against you, he will be with you. When those all little, little things, they call familiar spirit, mommy, water spirit, witches, wizards. Well, if they ever mention your name, they get into trouble. Because the Almighty is supporting you, he will never leave you. I said they will never leave you. And they will never forsake you. Then we're reading in Judges chapter 14. In Judges chapter four, uh, sorry, in Judges chapter 6, from verse 14. Judges 6, 14. And the Lord looked upon him. And he said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Listen to this. Have not I sent thee? 
Gideon, why are you afraid? I'm afraid because I'm the least in my family. And my family is the least in the land. Nobody reckons with us at all. We have nothing. We know nothing. We possess nothing. We're not a significant people. He said, you may be a zero, but with God Almighty, you can do all things. That's why he said unto Gideon, have not I commanded thee? And he said unto him, O oh, my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. And the Lord said unto him, Surely there is no doubt about this. I will be with you. He said, I will be with you. And thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. Jeremiah. Jeremiah also thought he couldn't do it. He was just a little child, an inexperienced child. And then God said, look at Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah chapter 1, reading from verses 7 and 8. But in verse 6, Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child. Don't say that again, that you are weak. Don't say that again, that you are ignorant. Don't say that again, that you cannot do what the Lord has appointed you to do. Don't say that again, that I'm a child. For thou shalt go to all that I send thee. And whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. You will do it. I said you will do it. Be not afraid of their faces. For I am with thee to deliver thee, says the Lord. The Lord will deliver you. In Isaiah chapter 43. Reading there from verses 1 and 2. But now does says the Lord that created thee, O Jacob. You can put your name there. And he that formed thee, O Israel. Put your name there. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. Are you born again? I said, are you redeemed? Are you a child of God? I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. Now let's read this together. Make it personal. When I pass through the waters, he will be with me. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow me. When I walk through the fire, I shall not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon me. Do you believe that is true? Do you believe that will be fulfilled? Nothing will be able to hurt your life in Jesus' name. In Jeremiah chapter 42. Jeremiah chapter 42. Reading there in verse 11. Be not afraid of the king of Babylon. Of whom ye are afraid. Be not afraid of him, says the Lord. For I am with you to save you. And to deliver you from his hand. The Lord himself has challenged us today. He has told us we will not allow the greatness of the task. Or the weight and the gravity of the assignment. Or the fierceness of our enemies. Or the sense of our own incompleteness and weakness and incompetence. And to make us fear we will keep our eyes on the might of omnipotence. We will look unto him for divine enablement. He is your sufficiency. You will not fail in Jesus' name. Looking at our difficulties or looking at the enemy will weaken the heart. Listening to the voice of men and leaning upon the arms of the flesh will increase fear and unbelief and paralyze faith. But and if you meditate on the greatness of the work, the immensity of the work, if you meditate on that, and you are meditating on the great demand of the ministry upon your life, it will depress your soul and sap your spiritual energy. But when you look unto God, who has called and commissioned you, and you meditate on his promises, believing his unchanging word, it will strengthen you. And you will do exploits in Jesus' name. Joshua has done his own. He's gone to his reward. Tonight, you are the one. And the Lord is telling you. He has chosen you. He has selected you. You have only one life. That life will be useful in Jesus' name. Has God not commanded you? Be strong. Be of a good courage. Be not afraid. Be not dismayed. Throw your weakness and your fears over into the river. Because the Lord says, he will be with you. Wherever you are, in the district, anywhere, the Lord will support you. You cannot fail, you will not fail. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. You will not fail. The hand of the Lord is upon your life. The eyes of the Lord are watching over you. He is the one that called you. He is the one that appointed you. He is the one that placed you in the ministry. He is the one that gave you that assignment. You will not fail. No, you cannot fail. 
the almighty god will support you until the very end lean upon the everlasting arms of the omnipotent god i see not commanded you don't you feel the call of god in your soul don't you feel the presence of god in your soul don't you see you are a child of god don't you see you are not just an ordinary person he has given you something to do we know it you know it other people know it rise up and you do your duty rise up and do the work he has assigned you to do you will not fail you will not fail it will be done be strong and of a good courage be obedient to the word of the lord don't be afraid don't be afraid lean upon the everlasting arms of the lord almighty